first thing that the prayer that engenders dominion produces is access to the voice of God. When a man who dominates by prayer is praying, one of the things that he catches from the realm is the voice of Yahweh. The reason is because dominion hinges on the voice of God. The wars were created by the word of God. So when that man is praying, he's seeking the proceeding word of God. He wants to pick what the father is saying. So he can be there for three days. His goal is not to come back and make a doctrine of three days non-stop prayer. His goal is to wait until God speaks. So while he's praying, if God has not spoken, he may be there for 14 days. Because the prayer will not stop until God speaks. Now, the reason we teach people to tarry for long in prayer is not to brag about it. It's so that they can develop stamina in order not to stop before God speaks. Because if they stop before God speaks, they wasted their time. If you don't have stamina and you are praying with Elijah, after the third time, you may go. I'm saying this now because there are those who will hear and say, we said it. All this long prayer, 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, we know it's flesh. That's not what we are saying. That training is necessary because there are many times you want to create change that it will take 72 hours for God to speak. So if you have not trained yourself on 14 hours prayers non-stop, you will not be able to wait until the voice of God comes. And what will create the change is not the prayer. What will create the change is the feedback that comes from heaven. And so prayer is the way of creating that gangway for that voice to come. Because the voice of God is upon many waters. The voice of God is full of majesty. The Bible said the voice of God thundered. It. He divided the flames of fire. He said he discovered the forest. He causes the hind to calf. Even creation itself is sustained by the voice of God. And so when a man wants to create dominion, without every contradiction, he will lock himself away and pray until God speaks. This is what Elijah knew. He knew that the darkness on the territory, only a change that is supernatural can judge the heart of the king. So he showed up and said, before God whom I stand, there shall be no rain or dew except at my word. After he finished saying it, he knew that if God doesn't veto it, there is problem. So Elijah would have been on that mountain for one week. Hope you know, Moses was waiting for the voice of God and he waited for 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't go there with the intention of beating 40 days and 40 nights. He went there to wait on the voice of God and until God speaks, nothing changes. Because the way to engender dominion is when God begins to talk. If God is not speaking into your life, you'll be in trouble. No matter where you worship. Have you not seen people mysteriously die from the most powerful places? Because there is so much God can do for you because of where you are. But the greatest insurance for your life is the speakings of God into your life. Because when God speaks to you, his jealousy defends it. He told Simeon, you will not see death until you see the salvation of Israel. Even when Simeon was old, he couldn't die because God has spoken. The voice of God will preserve. The voice of God will defend. And the voice of God will keep that which he has said. There are many forces today that program men. Because when a spirit speaks, he's not just speaking to create change. When a spirit speaks, he's programming your life. Have you seen people before? They get married, their husband is gentle and calm. Because their husband is gentle and calm, they oppress him until they are separated. It's after the marriage is destroyed that they come back to their senses. And then you ask them, they say, I don't know why. Have you seen people before? They marry very good women. And they trouble them until the marriage is destroyed. After the woman leaves, then they now wake up and say, why did I do what I did? They were programmed. Have you seen people before? Every decision they make takes them away from their blessing. They were in the business for five years. In the sixth year that God wanted to visit, they quit. And the moment they quit, they now hear that the business have, bl have blown. And then they are wondering why. The reason is because demons speak into men's life and speak into circumstances to program men into destruction. Welcome to Revival Channel. 
In this place, we practice the word of God. We encourage you to kindly sit tight, listen to the undiluted life transforming messages and prayers from God's servant. Don't forget to like this video, please share this video, drop your comments, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Turn on the notification bell as well for new content when being uploaded. Stay blessed. Thank you. So when you begin to pray to hear the voice of God, you are actually reprogramming your life for victory and for success. In Isaiah chapter 30 verse 12, he said when you are in the wrong way, he said you will hear a voice. That's what prayer does for you. The voice will tell you, turn back. That is not the way to go. You may have journeyed on that path for five years. It doesn't matter. What makes you succeed is not how long. It's how right. I've told you before that if you are in the wrong direction, speed is not an advantage. Isaiah 30, 21. He said, turn. That's not the way to go. When you see men that things keep working for them, it's because there is an accuracy they have attained in the place of prayer. They will not move until God speaks. So sometimes the thing is not working. That's what they are doing. And then you are wondering, are you okay? No, they are not okay. They are hearing something from another realm. But the man who depends only on his mind does not know that there is already a verdict that is not given to man that walketh to order his step. There are too many wise creatures in this realm to manipulate things. And so in order for your life not to be programmed wrongly, you need to stay on the prayer altar. If you will stay on the prayer altar until you apprehend the voice of God, you become invincible. Jesus said, as the wind bloweth. He said, thou listest not from whence it cometh or where it goeth. He said, so are they that are born by the Spirit of God. They are men with noble intentions, but they keep making mistakes upon mistakes. Your life will end up in struggle if the mistakes you make are too many. But the way to minimize error and to reprogram your life for greatness is to ensure that your altar is generating the voice of God. If the voice of God is cast, then a people will be sent into captivity. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 and 10, they had programmed everything to destroy John. They manipulated men against him. Systems turned against him. There was nowhere to hide anymore. He literally became a victim until they arrested him. They tried to kill him according to church history. They dragged him on the street. He wouldn't die. They put him in boiling oil. He wouldn't die. When they saw that he wouldn't die, they now cast him to an isle called Patmos. But the guy knows that he's not succeeding because of where he is. He's succeeding because he's invincible. And what makes him invincible is because the voice of God is with him. And suddenly, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 and 10, he said, I was in the spirit on the last day. And I heard a voice as of a trumpet. And when I turned, he said, I saw seven golden lampstands. The Isle of Patmos, which is supposed to be the Isle of Death, became the mountain of God. What reprogrammed his experience is because he was in the spirit. There are many people today, men may gang up against you. They will push you to a place where they think you want to die. Did you read about Jeremiah? They threw Jeremiah into a pit, a sock away. That would have been a place of suffocation. But while Jeremiah was there, he had understood the technology. From that pit, he was prophesying the destiny of Israel. That means such men become so invincible that you can't destroy them. Anywhere they are, they have a superior knowledge to record every negative coding that the devil has done. There are people today, they just wake up. They go out and the moment they are stepping on the road, they are knocked down. You think it's coincidence? Their steps were manipulated. Because when demons want to destroy you sometimes, they program you into self-destruction. And the guy wants to travel. He delays himself on Monday, delays himself on Tuesday, and stood up on Wednesday to travel. And that Wednesday, he woke up, he kept dragging his feet until he left for the park around 11. The car he entered is already destined for accident. He didn't know why a journey that should have been on Sunday was delayed to Wednesday. And the journey was delayed to Wednesday of all the cars. is the one that should somersault that he entered. It's because of demonic programming. But when men begin to pray, there's a voice that travels with them. Even if the program is complete, 
why they are yet there they say no not this one a lady went to the airport paid for her flight the flight was about to take off in fact they hurried her because they were about shutting the door after she pleaded begged they did all the necessary connection to get her on the flight the moment she checked in her luggage she lost her peace give me my bag they say no they've checked it in i need my bag i'm not going they say they checked it in he said no problem and she walked out the plane crashed the question is what about the 80 to 90 christians that are on that flight is it that god specially loved this one no there is a heritage that is for every believer it is the one that ascended in the spirit that picked it if all of them picked it all of them would have left the flight it is one that picked it as much as god would have loved to save everybody the spiritual technology made for their salvation is the voice of god and only the man who will pitch the tent of prayer will access it but unfortunately many died because they didn't hear god's voice have you not heard people that struggled and fought for what they called an opportunity not knowing that that is the grave with the mouth open how come they didn't hear they said there will be a voice behind you that voice will tell you no turn back i've seen men before that invested in business so much that you will say this is the one that will create breakthrough when they are about to move they lose their peace and they say lord what are you saying what are you saying and god said not this one not this one they quickly withdrew and true to the voice of god it crashed the reason christians are victims and they are not dominating their world is because 90 percent of their decision making process is coming from their brain they are making decisions about tomorrow with the information of today and yesterday who told you today and yesterday is sufficient to to arrest tomorrow the only thing that knows tomorrow the only one that knows tomorrow is the monarch of zion because his name is alpha omega he is sitting in yesterday today and tomorrow at the same time so when he's speaking he's not speaking in the now he is also speaking in the tomorrow when we pray and we hear god's voice we secure the future because we reprogram ourselves many people want to get married they go and check the lady is working in the oil company if we get married at least you'll bring something on the table one of the ladies that they advised me to marry she died last year it pains me so much that she was cut short it pains me i'm not saying this as a testimony because you can't be testifying when somebody else is hot get don't get me wrong but what i'm saying is what if i married that person by august i would have married in may by august i would have been a widow or a widower is they call it widower meanwhile god is planning for me to start encounter jesus in november if i became a widow in august how would i have heard about this in three months see where we are all of these possibilities would have sunk just because i didn't hear god meanwhile the one i wanted to marry or the one i'm married to now <laughs> hear god who? a lady told me in brazil she will relocate to nigeria they say she loved missions she loved mission and when i check ah she's a brazilian if i give birth my son will be nigerian and brazilian this thing happening in nigeria now that we we are still prophesying and praying if i marry a brazilian at least uh, if things happen why we are trusting god there will be some way of safety <laughs> they say oh brazilians they love nigerians this is an inter she we, she loved mission everything was arranged they showed me pictures she was like a goddess i went home i did like this <laughs> You don't know what we are saying. What I'm talking about here is not, it's not religion. I'm telling you how men succeed in life. The other one told me she is a partner. Before you know, my phone will shake like this. A lot has entered. Ah! I said, these are the kind of women that support ministry. No, 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 no. You don't joke with me. Meanwhile, this my wife never gave a seed. One day I stood up, I said, Hope I'm not about to make a mistake. Are you sure this lady believe in this calling? <laughs> I say, 
Are you sure this lady believe in this calling? Let me not come and marry somebody that tomorrow, even if I'm going for meetings, problem. Are you sure she believes in this calling? And I went and sat down, and the demon whispered to my ear. Say, don't worry. She thinks she's a big woman. She thinks she's a big woman. Just ignore her. She's not serious. So when I looked at her and I said, okay, these are the feminists. They think they, will, they think they are important. Because, I mean, she has a master's degree. She is working as a head of sustainability in one of the leading companies in Nigeria. She has done senior managerial courses in Harvard, in Lagos Business School. So it's natural for you to look at her and say, this person is proud. And I looked at her and I saw, I said, Kai, there's pride here. There's pride. I began to interpret things by, by wisdom. I said, Kai, this lady is not submissive. Before I knew what was happening, five people came and said, Hey, is it this person? Run for your life. Thank God I hear God. The last one year of my life is the best I've ever lived. I've not recorded, hear this, I've not recorded as much success as I've recorded in the last one year. Meanwhile, I have rest. See, when I'm, I'm oh Jesus, hear God. Oh. If you know what they call peace, I sleep and I roll from one side of the bed to another. Because what you need to explain to some people, you don't need to explain to her. She's mature enough to know, even before you say. I'm not trying, this is not social media hype. I'm not trying to hype her. I've never had a reason to come and explain, say, this is like this, this. She knows. And the things that should be a problem, before I think it, she works it out. And she doesn't even want me to say thank you. What if I had men and very important people stood against this? Very important people. Say, don't try it. You know, do you know Edo ladies? I, I, I thought you were exposed. Have you not heard about people from Edo? They brought all kinds of argument. But when I, I go to the place of prayer, sometimes I make up my mind that this thing is over. As I go there, the oracle will appear. Hina Makatawa. They say, you are about to sell off your destiny. I have seen you have weighed your future. This is the person that can bear the weight of your calling. And from the, the week we got married, we went to Meduguri. I was thinking, okay, I will, I will persuade her. She is more interested. When I travel, sometimes I forget to call. Because I come back, I'm so tired. She will send me a message and say, the Lord refresh you and strengthen you. I'm praying for you. Oh, I will now feel guilty. <laughs> Imagine the stress we go through. I will now come home and say, I'm sorry, I have another meeting next week. Should I go? And then I'm ready to go for a meeting. She'll stand up and say, you won't go. And then I'll call my host and say, I'm sorry, my wife said I shouldn't go. She stands up and says, he's sold out. He belongs to Jesus. Go. Everything people suspected was a lie. They misinterpreted her. What if I didn't hear God? By now, you'd have heard that a pastor slapped his wife. And then they'll put my picture on social media when I'm doing like this. They'll now say, we said it, this anger, there's anger here. <laughs> Prayer is what makes men invincible. He said, as the wind bloweth. He said, thou listest not from whence it cometh or whence it goeth. He says, so are they that are born by the Spirit of God. There are many people that are suffering from demonic programming. The Bible said the Holy Ghost led Jesus to the mountain to be tempted of the devil. Matthew 4 verse 1. The reason is because the Holy Ghost knew the devil was waiting for temptation. That means the destiny and the ministry of Jesus was at stake. And when Jesus went there, he knew how to surpass the program of the demons. The season that was called a season of temptation before the devil showed up for 40 days and for 40 nights the bible didn't record anything supernatural that happened but when the devil came the voice of god was with him he said if you are the son of god turn this stone to bread he said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god when he finished that season of temptation and he descended from the mountain it was supposed to be 
the time of temptation. But the Bible said the land of Zabulu. The land of Naphtali. He said, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. He said, they that sat in the region of the shackles of death, a great light is shone forth. And he didn't stop there. He said, he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad. So the season where he should have been tempted became a season of fame and influence. What changed the program? It was prayer. Your life will continue to go in a haphazard way until you stabilize it through prayer. When we begin to pray, we are insisting that our destiny will become like the path of the just that goes upward and forward only because that is the program that God has for you. You are not supposed to be up today, down tomorrow. No, that was not God's programming. God's programming is upward and forward only. But what you will do to ensure that that program play out in your life is to sustain it by prayer. You read about Abraham, the moment he came to Bethel, Genesis 12 verse 6, he built an altar. He knows that if I don't build this altar, I will return to Haran. What will keep this program running is prayer. Who told you that life is luck and chance? Men insist to define the pathway of their destiny through prayer. When you see things working for people, there is a deity and an altar that they are servicing. If you don't, different programs will begin to interject the divine program of your life. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He said, they are thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a hope and a future. So when evil begins to happen to you, know that another program is trying to subjugate the program of God. And what you will do to keep only the program of God running is to build your priesthood by prayer. That's why it's not every prayer that is littered with prayer points. Some prayers we are praying just to keep our feet on the path of God. There are certain prayers we are praying just to insist that the program of God runs. And the way that happens is that prayer gives us access to the voice of God. The elders of old knew this. That's why they say we will give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Nobody survives on earth with human wisdom. Spirits are involved. Let me read you a shocking story from the scripture. Matthew 22 from verse 25. I've never seen something that struck me like this in my life. Seven brothers. The first one married a lady. She, he died. The second one married the same lady and died. The third one married the same lady and died. Uh -uh. Won't you wait and say what is going on here? When people don't have the voice of God, they will be making the same mistake. You will be wondering, why can't they see it? They are locked by a program. There was a program to destroy that family. Seven sons. The fourth one married the same lady, died. The fifth one married, died. The sixth one married, died. The seventh one died. And when the seventh one died, that was when the lady died. A whole family wrecked by one program. One. But nobody could hear the voice that says restore. Nobody could hear the voice that says, this is not the way to go. You see things happening to people. You say, Kai, these people are not wise. If a demon writes a program, it will sweep you off your feet. You will do the same thing for 10 years. Until God speaks, you will wonder, how come you never took notice? The reason we pray is because there are dark wisdoms, there are blind men. And when men are blinded, they are ostracized from the commonwealth of Israel. But when you begin to pray, suddenly, you begin to connect to other frequencies. You do a business, and as you're about to wire the money, you lose your peace. You say, wait, wait, what's happening? Wait, you check. And then it tells you it's not this one. And suddenly, you begin to walk circumspectly, making progress continuously. And people are wondering, this man is wise. Nobody is actually wise. People actually hear spirits. When you say somebody is wise, he has access to the voice of a spirit. Because only spirits know tomorrow. And the spirit of God is the governor of the realm. When you find yourself struggling with prayer, know that you are about to enter trouble. Because there are many spirits who have studied your grandfathers. They know what your grandfather fell to. Did you read about Abraham? 
He said, Abraham loved fair women. Isaac loved fair women. Jacob loved fair women. They know what wrongs in your bloodline. They know your bloodline. People are angry. So when they want to destroy you, they stir anger and you stand up. You say, no, I'm a warrior. How can you do this? You destroy the things you have built for five years. When you finish destroying it, you now come and sit down. You use another three years to build again. When you finish building, they come and stir anger and you stand up. You say, I'm the man here. And boop, 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 boop. you destroy everything. When you finish showing your manhood through foolishness, you will come back and start again. It's a program. But when you start praying, when the devil activates that program, then the Holy Ghost comes from within. I say, this is not the way to go. This is not the way to go. And gradually, you recover your destiny. Too many people are not praying. That's why things are happening to them. Things are not supposed to happen to us. We are supposed to make things happen. Because before you were born, he knew you. And he has already ordained you to be a prophet. That means the program of your destiny was written before your conception. Your job is through the voice of God by priesthood to follow what was spoken before you. For you, before the foundation of the world. Dominion is actually apprehension of the voice of God. And this is possible by prayer. Sometimes you may be wrong. Sometimes you may be innocent. But this thing doesn't matter whether you are right or wrong. It's a program. Paul was preaching the gospel affecting nations and suddenly they, okay, the demons orchestrated the setup and they picked Paul. And the only way Paul could save himself, he was in a tight corner and he said, I appeal to Pharaoh, to Herod. And Paul had to be taken to Rome. All of that was a program. While they were traveling to Rome, when they came to the belly of the sea, that was when Poseidon came alive, the god of the sea. He wanted them to drown and be buried in the belly of the sea. If the man is buried in the belly of the sea, what happens to the book of Colossians? What happens to the book of Ephesians? He has projected into the future. This man is not just healing the sick. He's leaving a legacy for the body of Christ. Let's drown him here. 14 days, they had nothing to eat. When he saw that hunger won't kill them, he came again and wanted to, sh to, sh to shatter the ship and pour by the Spirit. He said, the Lord, the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I saw, he said, stood by me last night and he said to me, there will be no loss. What kind of invincible oppression is that? Because he heard from another realm. Fear not! He said, there shall be no loss. And he stood up and he said, Sars, be of good cheer. There shall be no loss. Suddenly, he became a captain. He became a ruler because of the access to the voice of God. Too many people are stranded. And because they can't hear God, they are blind. Do you know the, the, the quagmire of a blind man? Everything becomes noise. As he's walking on the road, even the car that should carry him, the noise wants to kill him. So he lives in fear. He lives in uncertainty because he can't give definition to anything. When you don't pray and you don't have access to the voice of God, matters of destiny will kill you. Because you will make the mistakes you shouldn't make. You will make the decisions you shouldn't make. You will take the turns. You have no business turning. And if you are in the wrong direction, speed is not an advantage. Have you been blessed by this video? Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and always remember to connect with us. God bless you. See you in our next video.